Well, hello. I'm one of those strange people who, when I see a math problem presented on Facebook or elsewhere, I feel compelled to go in and look at it, get into it, check it out, make sure it's uh, accurate, and think about it. And uh, it's just uh, like catnip. Uh, it's something I have to do. Um, yesterday, a friend of mine presented an interesting statement on Facebook, which is that Japanese kids learn multiplication at a very early age in a, day, in a way that's very different than the way we're taught in the West. And I really thought about this and discovered that, well, fundamentally, it's not really all that different. It's just presented in a, in a different matter. To us, uh, what surprised me, actually, is, is that to most people, it looks like it's magic because we're so used to doing it one particular way. Uh, we all do it kind of the same way, lining up columns and multiplying out individual digits. This is actually doing the same exact operation, but it's doing it in graphics terms. Let's see how it works. Um, we, in this example, for example, we have uh, two simple numbers, 13 times 12. And the 13 is broken into one red stroke and three blue strokes. The 12 is, is represented as one green stroke and two black strokes. And what the child does is look for the places in which the strokes cross, counting up the number of crossings. And then you also need to pay attention to the fact that um, this, you know, this three is, is uh, three ones, and this two is two ones, but this is a ten, and this is a ten. So the, the tens are handled a little, a little bit differently, so that you have a hundreds column where you have tens multiplying tens, you have tens column where a one multiplies a ten, or a ten multiplies a one, and you have the ones column here where you have ones multiplying each other. So very simply, you have one crossing in the hundreds column. That's this one right here. You have two crossings in the tens column here, plus another three down here, making a total of five crossings. And then you have six crossings here. So that's indeed the correct answer. Um, but this is actually the same thing we do, just represented in graphic terms. Um, what is nice is it exploits something which is multiplication can be think of, thought of as constructing a rectangular array. So 2 times 3 is represented as this 2 by 3 uh, box here, if you will. Um, and that's a very nice, very geometric way of representing multiplication. Um, what I think is understressed in the West is what the concept of multiplication is all about. You can think of it in terms of these rectangular arrays, and as we'll see, that's actually how kids are taught nowadays, uh, is to think in terms of um, an, array, an array operation of some sort. Um, but let's look at the way uh, us Westerners would do it. This is the same exact problem um, represented uh, in a more traditional form. Um, you ha what you do is you take the 2 and you multiply it out by each of the digits, and as you're going, you're adding up the separate components of those, uh, the separate contributions of those digits. So 2 times 3 becomes 6, there's no carry into the next column, so then you have 2 times 1 to make 2. Uh, you bring a 0 down because you're now working with a 10. Uh, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 1 is 1, and you add up the result and you get the same answer, 156. Notice that there's a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6 here in these uh, intermediate additions. That's the same 1, 2, 3, and 6 coming down here. Um, if you think about it in a slightly more expanded fashion, what you're really doing is you're taking each digit and multiplying it by the other and scaling it. So really you're taking 100 to represent the 1 times 1, 30 to represent 10 times 30, 20 to represent 2 times 10, and 6 to represent 2 times 3. So 100, 30, 20, and 6. That's exactly the same as the 100, the 30, the 20, and the 6 right here. So really the operation is exactly the same. It's, it's, it's identical. Uh, it's just being represented a different way. And again, the disadvantage of doing it this way is simply that you have to have the times table memorized. Um, which is why it strikes me as amazing that people think this is somehow magic that this works when all it's doing is, is it's doing it in a um, geometric way rather than knowing the times table. So fundamentally, the thing that's not being taught is what the concept is that you're doing. This is the same thing. This is the same thing as this. It's just being done graphically versus having to pull out, you know, having to know like 9 times 9. The other thing is, though, the graphic mechanisms start to fall apart when you talk about larger problems. 12 and 13 are great, but you'll notice there weren't that many lines. 
Uh, in a more typical problem, you're going to have fives and sevens and eights and nines. I mean, you're going to have some fairly large digits resulting in a large number of nines. Then it becomes complicated because actually counting the crossings becomes tricky. And this was my first attempt, and, and it came out ugly because I kept having to extend, it kept getting bigger. I kept having to extend the lines uh, to accommodate what was happening. So 27 is represented as two lines in this direction and seven lines in this direction. 54 is represented as five lines in this direction, four lines in this direction. And then I'm counting up the crossings so that there's 10 in the hundreds column, making a thousand. There's eight in the tens column up here. And then this is tricky. Uh, if you have to actually count these out, you, you can count out 35 crossings. But this is where it starts to get kind of error prone. A child might make a mistake. Also, a child might make the mistake of having to add up 8 plus 35 in the tens column to come up with 43, or really 430. Um, that's a place where uh, a pretty significant amount of error can occur. And then down here, you got 4 times 7 uh, in the ones column to make 28. You add all those things up together, you get the correct answer. But you can see that this is starting to get kind of daunting for what a very young child could do. There's almost a, an advantage, perhaps, in simplifying it so you don't have to actually count crossings. Um, so one of the things I thought of is, is use the same approach where you're representing in a kind of a graphical way, multiplying out the digits. So for example here, this is 20 times 50 to make 1,000 taking into account this is the hundreds column. Um, this is 20 times 4 to make 80. And this is 7 times 50 to make 350, taking into account these are both in the tens column. And then lastly, you have 7 times 4, 28. So that's multiplying out the individual digits to come up with the individual contributions. You add all of those terms up, 1,000 plus 80 plus 350 plus 28, and you come up with the correct answer, which is 1,458. So what's nice about this approach is this is kind of still reinforcing the graphic uh, technique, but here the downside is by eliminating the actual crossings, um, we are actually having to memorize times tables. So we have to know 7 times 5 is 35, or else you actually have to draw a box or look on a piece of graph paper and draw out a box that's five by seven and actually count it up. So it can still be taught to a child um, uh, at a very young age what you're doing, as long as you as long as you reinforce the concept of taking the individual digits and multiplying them out. So then, also, I wanted to look at what happens if you deal with a larger problem. And here again, the graphical approach actually does start to break down. It starts to get overly overly complicated. So 497 times 642. The 9, the 7, and the 6 would make it very difficult, I think, to draw individual lines. Uh, that would be a lot of crossings to have to count, you know, 54 here, 36 there, 42 there, not to mention getting all of the scaling correct. So these dots I've introduced are just suggesting placeholders for where zeros would be. So this 4 times 642 is really 400 times 642, taking into account the zeros. And when you add up what each of these elements are, you'll see 240,000, 16,000, 800. That's actually the same digits that we would do if we use the Western approach, putting the 497 under the 642 and multiplying out the 4. You would actually be doing this to come up with a term that was 256,800 in the first line. So really, the Western way, you'd have three additions. This way, you end up with nine additions. Seems like the Western way kind of wins. But actually, if you're working on an abacus, uh, this, is, this is actually the right way to do it. Abacuses can be used to add numbers up very quickly. So you're just looking at individual digits and doing four times six, four times four, four times two, nine times six, nine times four, nine times two. 7 times 6, 7 times 4, 7 times 2. So you're applying each of those individual multiplications very quickly and then adding the appropriately scaled uh, term in to come up with the answer 319,074. So I know I, I'm kind of going off topic by talking about abacuses, but actually dealing with nine separate additions is not a problem on an abacus because you can add things up so quickly on an abacus. But on pen and paper, writing out all of those things and adding it up, those nine individual terms starts to be a problem. You want to kind of reduce that down. Lastly, I mentioned this is identical to the way we do it in the West, and it truly is. 
I took a math book uh, that my niece happens to use. It's this math book called Investigations in Number, Data, and Space, uh, second edition. And um, I actually looked up uh, how they would do, how they teach multiplication, and they show a number of ways of thinking about it and simplifying it. And fundamentally what they're doing is, is they're reinforcing a method that's based on the rectangular array. You're encouraged to take numbers like 38 and 26 apart into 30 and 20. So 30 becomes 30 and uh, 38 becomes 30 and 8, 26 becomes 20 and 6, and now you're encouraged to think about rectangular arrays of those sizes and how much, how many seats there would be in an auditorium filled, you know, with 30 by 20 um, seats. And this is actually exactly the same thing as this approach here. This is the, exactly the same. It's just being represented in a word fashion as opposed to a very simple graphic fashion. So there are advantages to representing it much more simply. But it's the same exact problem, and you end up with four separate contributions that you have to add up. Um, and lastly, this the book even goes a little bit further and suggests a method in which you can simplify um, the process by finding, for example, if you can uh, get the closest multiple of 10 um, and come up with that and then correct. So 38 becomes 40. Figure out that multiplication and then subtract out the two rows to come up with 38. So in other words, uh, this might be a way of encouraging you to do multiplications in your head. A very good thing to do because then the concept of what um, multiplication is gets really reinforced as opposed to simply doing rote operations on paper. So that's all I really wanted to talk about. When I was presented this problem here as being somehow magical and look, it works, but isn't it amazing that it does? No, it's not really amazing. It's actually the way multiplication works. It's the way you extract the individual digits. It's just that us in the West are taught to do it at such an early age in such a rote fashion that we don't really appreciate it is the same thing. And lastly, I wanted to say these uh, images are copyright. Um, this image is uh, no doubt either copyright of Facebook or the original um, uh, artist who put this online. And uh, this is most definitely copyrighted by copyright 2008 by uh, Pearson Education Incorporated. Uh, however, under U.S. law, I am claiming exemption from copyright infringement since I'm discussing these pages in an educational context. So therefore, this discussion can be distributed in the United States without fear of copyright infringement. And I'm putting my discussion in the public domain so that it may be talked about or used in classrooms or whatever uh, for whatever use per, uh, without any copyright problems whatsoever. So enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this math talk.